ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವ್ಯದ್ವೇಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದಸ್ವತಿ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮಿಣಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸಿದ್ಧೇರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸತ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ಮೂಕಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಕೃಪಾತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಆಲ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ರೀಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ವಿ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ರೀಡ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಶ್ರೀಭಗವಾಚ ಅಸಂಶಯ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ ಮನೋ ದುರ್ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಚಲ ಅಭ್ಯಾಸೇನ ತು ಕೌಂತೇಯ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯೇನ ಚ ಗೃಹ್ಯತೆ ಅಸಂಯತಾತ್ಮನ ಯೋಗ ದುಷ್ಪ್ರಾಪ ಇತಿ ಮೇ ಮತಿ ವಶ್ಯಾತ್ಮನಾತು ಯತ ಶಕ್ಯೋ ವಾಪ್ತು ಉಪಾಯತ ಸೋ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ದಟ್ ಐ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಟ್ ಯುರ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಸೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಚಂಚಲ the mind is so chanchala it is so distracted and restless and pramathi it is so turbulent balavadridam and it is so strong it's so unyielding and arjuna says that i really don't know how to control my mind it's so difficult it is almost like controlling the wind and you know you're asking me to do all of these practices right to contemplate on that pure self that atman but when i sit down the mind is just incredibly restless it goes everywhere but atman right and it is so turbulent it just explodes it explodes into so many thoughts and it's so strong that i can't even control it so what do i do it's like controlling the wind and shri krishna says yes arjuna i understand i understand it's difficult but it is not impossible and the means to control the mind are two abhyasa which means practice constant practice and vairagya detachment or dispassion and here you know we spent time a lot of time going through each of these words but today i just wanted to share a few new things about these words one is see in our mind there's an aspect that we cannot actually control and there's an aspect that we can control in chapter 3 of the bhagavad gita bhagwan krishna says that helplessly we are moved by our prakriti prakriti means by our nature by our vasanas so our vasanas are these deep embedded impressions in us and we cannot control when they manifest right because sometimes all of a sudden we will think why did we have such thoughts 
we're you know totally in this path we're doing what we can but some kind of weird thoughts will come up and we're just like where did that come from that's not me i don't think like that that is called the vasana so they, these vasanas are there in our subconscious mind and they're deeply embedded and every now and then they will just surface up and they could be completely different completely opposite to your state of mind right now so that vasana coming up we have no control over that because it, it just comes it's our prakriti it's our prakriti it's our nature it's our swabhava so if something like that comes up don't worry about it we talked about kashaya before it is that kashaya it is like this just this weird thought that happened it came that's okay but what can we control whether to nourish that thought or to let it go so of course if it's a good thought then we can nourish it and say okay let's do it let's let's keep going with it but if it's not a good thought then let it go that's in our control so what thought comes up we have no control because that's based on our prakriti but when that thought comes up what to do with it that's very much in our control and that thought you know can come then to the level of speech and then the level of action if it's a wrong thought then don't even let it come to be a repetitive thought and then don't let it even come to be speech and worse don't let it come to be action because then it's a whole parampara a whole lineage this lineage we can control, right? So the effort is, the practice, the abhyasa is to be very alert of our minds. So one level of abhyasa is to be very alert of our minds. And if such thoughts come up, just let them go. Let them go. Know that it's this vasana erupting and it has to, it has to come out. It's not like it can't come out. It has to come out. That's the nature of things. When the minute we get cleaned up a little bit inside, all those things that haven't come out, they'll start coming up. You know, it's like when we clean the house and we really, really clean it, then we see all these little, little dirty things that we have to fix. So one level is to be alert about the thoughts that come in the mind. And then another level of abhyasa is also our spiritual practice, whether we are doing puja, we are, we are doing japa, we are doing shravanam, we keep listening to scriptures, all of that, whatever our practices, our spiritual practices, puja, japa, dhyana, we're contemplating on that divine form, or we're doing nididhyasana, where we're contemplating on that knowledge, we're studying scriptures, keep that practice going and in yoga vasishta there are four levels of how the mind can be tamed through this abhyasa so i just wanted to also share that because it's very very beautiful the first one it says adhyatma vidya dhigamaha adhyatma vidya dhigamaha means keep the mind in adhyatma vidya the knowledge of the self just keep the mind bathed showered cleansed in the knowledge of the self in any which way read about it listen about it talk about it write about it but kind of just make your mind bathe in it constantly this is called adhyatma nitya digama constant Adhyatma Vidya Adhigama, constant, constant bathing the mind in the knowledge of the self, constant repetition in many, many ways. Now, if the mind it does, it cannot do that on its own, let's say the mind cannot do that on its own, cannot be too much in this knowledge of the self, then what to do? Sadhu Sangama, spend time 
with great saints and sages or spend time with great people who are walking on the path. Just keep spending time with them and let that be your practice so that slowly, slowly, all of this knowledge trickles in. Sadhu Sangama, seek their company, be with them. And let us say somebody is, you know, very proud and thinks, okay, you know, I don't believe in all of that. I don't think anybody can help me. I'm going to work on myself. Then, vasana parityaga means work on our own negative vasanas. At this level, do a lot of introspection. A practice becomes introspection, thinking about where we are at in our lives, what are the things we can do better, how can we improve, you know, what can we do. Spend time really thinking about that so we let go of our negative vasanas and start developing positive vasanas. This can be our practice and we can pick a value. For example, our value could be satyam or truth. And in my day-to-day -day life, am I practicing truthfulness? Am I practicing truthfulness? Am I being true to myself and to other people? Right? So this thing should come again and again and again in my mind. Am I living this the right way? Alert living. And for somebody then who is in the seat of meditation and just really, really can't bring their mind to focus, what can they do? Prana spandana nirodhanam. So prana spanda nirodhanam means slow down the breath. Slow down the breath because the breath is controlled, is connected to the mind. The mind is connected to the breath. They're connected together. They're both in the subtle body. So if I cannot focus, I cannot control my mind, just slow down the breathing. Focus on the breathing. And slowly, slowly the mind will come under control. So prana spanda nirodhanam. So in this way, in these four ways, this can also be our practice. So the first one, Adhyatma Vidya Dhigama. Just keeping our minds in that knowledge or what we call Brahma Bhyasa. Read about it, listen about it, think about it, discuss about it, keep your mind in that. Or it can be Sadhu Sangama. Keep the company of great people who are walking on the path or co-seekers who are walking on the path. Or start working on ourselves, vasana parityaga, thinking, okay, what are the areas we have to improve and being very, very, very alert that this is, the, this is the good vasana that I want to cultivate. This is the negative vasana that I want to get rid of, right? Or prana spanda nirodhana, focus on the breath. And the practice can also be a combination of these four. It's not an either or kind of thing. It can also be a combination of these four because definitely they're all very, very useful to us. So this is the practice, abhyasa. And last week when we had our class, I explained the whole uh, you know, science behind practice, right? That it is something that we have to do repeatedly. This is Abhyasa. Vairagya, as I explained also last week, is that detachment from the lower by attaching to the higher. So always remember that this detachment is not out of force. Not that we're saying, okay, we have to stop doing it, we have to stop doing it. It's not out of force, it's out of love. Vairagya detachment actually means love. <laughs> because we love the higher so much, that we immediately are able to let go of the lower. So I, I know it sounds kind of like an oxymoron, but vairagya actually means love, means love. I have great loves for something higher, so I 
freely let go of the lower. And the language of the intellect is conviction. The language of the mind is repetition. So in this verse, vairagya, conviction, that this is higher, this is lower, and thus let me let go of the lower, that is the intellect speaking. Abhyasa, the repetition, that is the mind feeling. Hmm? So when the intellect with conviction and the mind with repetition, they come together, then that in essence is a spiritual practice. That's all that has to happen. All the sadhanas, all the spiritual practices, they're trying to do only this, integrate the intellect and the mind. That's what they're trying to do. So Bhagavan Krishna says, this is the secret. If we are convinced in the intellect, if we repeat that practice with the mind, then we will succeed. It's tough, I know, but with this, we will succeed. Then, Bhagavan Krishna goes on to say that definitely those who have control over their mind, right, the vashyatmana tuyatata, those in verse number 36, those who have control and those who are striving, for sure they will succeed. But asamyatatmana, the one who does not have control, yoga dushprapa, this yoga, this kind of meditation, contemplation on the self, it's going to be very, very hard. Hmm? Then what happened was Arjuna asked Sri Krishna a question. So let's read that again. We read that a little bit last week, but let's read that again. And then we will go through it in detail. So verse 37 now. Arjuna Uvacha. Arjuna Uvacha. Ayati Shraddha Yopetaha. Ayati Shraddha Yopetaha. Yoga Chalita Manasaha. Yoga Chalita Manasaha. Aprapya Yoga Sam Siddhim. Aprapya Yoga Sam Siddhim. Kam Gatim Krishna Gachati. Kam Gatim Krishna Gachati. So Arjuna asks this question. This is all really nice, but what if we don't see the fulfillment of self-realization in this life? What happens to us, right? What happens to all those who are striving so much, but they have not seen the fulfillment of self-realization? So ayatihi here, the first word means not enough effort was put. Yatihi is the one who strives. Ayatihi means for some reason not enough effort was put. But shraddhayo petaha, but this person has a lot of faith, a lot of faith. Yoga chalita manasaha. And for some reason, from yoga, from that self, that abidance in the self, the mind has fallen away. Chalita manasaha. Aprapya yoga samsiddhim. They fail to attain perfection. In yoga. Yoga here means abidance in the self. They fail to attain that perfection. Kamgatim Krishna, what is their destination, O Krishna? What where do they what is their end? Gachati. Where do they go? So here now, who is Arjuna speaking about? First, it's important to understand this. Arjuna is not speaking about a karma yogi, right? Because for one who performs karma yoga in their life, they attain higher worlds in the next life. The fruit of karma yoga is higher worlds such as swarga, etc. 
And Arjuna is also not speaking about somebody who does upasana or to call, who, those who contemplate on a deity, let us say, who, who do those single pointed practices, japa, puja, you know, and deep, deep contemplation upasana. They will get Brahmaloka, higher worlds, or they'll get the loka of their upasya, of who they worship. So those who worship Bhagavan Shiva will get Shiva Loka. Those who worship Bhagavan Rama will get Saket Loka, like that, right? Bhagavan Vishnu Vekuntha. So those who do karma will go to higher worlds, Swarga. Those who do Upasana will go to even higher worlds, Brahma Loka. So this is not for them. And those who have realized the self, means they will not come back end of story right and the, the life is end of story they will not come back so this question is also not for them this question is for somebody now who has come into the realm of jnana yoga knowledge this question is somebody who performed karma yoga performed upasanas also got some Chitta Shuddhi, purity of the mind, and Chitta Ekagrata, single pointedness of mind, and has attained the qualities of a seeker, what we call Sadhana Chatushtaya, the fourfold qualities of a seeker, which we have seen many times Viveka, that discernment, right, between uh, truth and untruth, Vairagya, that dispassion. And then the six qualities, Shama, Dhamma, Uparama, Titiksha, Shraddha, Samadhanam, and Mumukshutva. So somebody who's getting or who has gotten all of these qualities, and someone who has approached a teacher, Guru Pasadana, and started on the path of Shravanam, Mananam, and Nididhyasanam, listening, reflection, contemplation. So someone who is on that path now. Hmm? So not a karma yogi, not an upasaka, not someone who realized the self, but someone who is on the path in jnana yoga. And that person is not just a casual seeker anymore. This person is a full-time seeker. Full-time seeker means this is their only purpose in life. There's no other thing. There's no also. Very often in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Krishna will say, Mayeva means only me, only me, only I should be the goal. Seek only me. So there's no question of, I want this realization, but I want also this and this and this. No, this is not for that person. That person will come back again. Hmm? This is for the one who is really a full time serious, sincere seeker who is on the path of Shravana, Manana, Nididhyasana. What happens to this seeker? They were on the path, but for some reason, the effort was not sufficient enough. And for some reason, the, they have fallen away from yoga. In the sense, they were not able to complete it, right? But they are full of faith and they are walking sincerely. What happens to them? Please tell me, O oh Sri Krishna. And Arjuna continues his question now in verse number 38. Kachin no bhaya vibhrashtaha. Kachinno bhaya vibhrashtaha. Chinna brahmiva nashyati. Chinna brahmiva nashyati. Apratishto maha baho. Apratishto maha baho. Vimudho brahmana pati. Vimudho brahmana Kachin no bhaya vibhrashtaha 
ಛಿನ್ನಾಭ್ರಮಿವ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ಅಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠೋ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ ವಿಮೂಢೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಪಥಿ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಚ್ಚಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ದಾತ್ ನ ಉಭಯ ವಿಭ್ರಷ್ಟ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ನ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಹವ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೋತ್ ಉಭಯ ವಿಭ್ರಷ್ಟ ದೇ ಹವ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬೋತ್ ಛಿನ್ನ ಅಭ್ರವಂ ಛಿನ್ನ ಅಭ್ರಂ ಇವ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ಛಿನ್ನ ಛಿನ್ನ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ರೆಂಟ್ ಅಭ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ರೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ಅಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ವಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಬೆಟ್ ಇವ ನಶ್ಯತಿ ಸೊ ದೇರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ರೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ದಟ್ ಪೇರಿಶಸ್ ಅಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಟ ದೇ ಹವ್ ನೋ ಸಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಓ ಮಹಾಬಾಹೋ now arjuna calls shri krishna o mahabaho vimudha brahmana pati and it's like they're deluded in the path of brahman so what is happening here it says fallen from both does he not o mighty arm perish like a rent cloud supportless and deluded on the path of brahman so now think of two sets of clouds okay there's one set of a cloud here one group of clouds here and one group of clouds here on my right side there's this little little cloud that's breaking away from this side breaking away from this side but has not yet reached this side huh so it is like a rent cloud it has come from this side breaking away but has just not reached here yet. what happens to that cloud in all of a sudden that cloud is neither here nor there uh, neither either place it just kind of disappears into thin air hmm? so arjuna's question is is this person like a rent cloud you know that is moving from one to the other and uh, their condition is so unstable apratishta means it's so unstable what happens to them they're not here this is the realm of karma yoga and upasana they're not in this realm because now they have done that they have already done their karma yoga and upasana they have already done that so they're moving towards jnana yoga they're moving towards more of jnana yoga they're here in the middle but at the same time they have not reached the fulfillment of jnana yoga they have not reached here so they're in between and they're unstable so is it that they're deluded in the path of brahman means like is it that they they remain deluded is it that they disappear is it that they go this way what happens to them this is arjuna's confusion so now arjuna he again he goes to shri krishna and he says this is why i am asking you this question because i know only you can solve it so verse 39 etan me samshayam krishna etan me samshayam krishna ಶೇಷತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇತೇ
Chetumarhasi, you ought to dispel it asheshataha completely. Why? Twat anyaha, there other than you, samshayasya, samshayasya of this doubt, asya cheta nahi upapadyate, means there is nobody else but you to dispel this doubt, right? There is no one other than you. So he says, this doubt of mine, O Krishna, please dispel it completely. You ought to dispel it completely, completely. Because other than you, there is nobody else who can do it. So now think about this question. It's so beautiful because many times we ask the wrong people questions, right? We ask people who don't know. Sometimes we go to a store and some random person, we're like, oh, where can you find this? Where is, where is this milk found? And if the person's like, I don't work here, you know? So many times we ask the questions. They may be right questions, but we ask the wrong person. So here Arjuna is teaching us that whenever we want to ask something, ask the right person and then we will get the right answer. And the only one who can dispel this doubt is Bhagavan Krishna. That Lord, that Ishwara who is the all-knowing mind, cosmic mind, the one that illumines all births and deaths of all jivas. So this all-knowing, all-powerful cosmic mind is the one that understands the way the whole world works. We would never be able to understand that question, nor answer that question, but only Bhagavan, who has that complete vision, can answer that question. So Arjuna has so much faith and he says, there's nobody else, there's nobody else but you who can do it. There's no other cheta. Cheta means there's no other dispeller. There's no other dispeller than you. So now Bhagavan Krishna is getting ready to answer the question to Arjuna. And let us see what he says. Verse number 40. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Sri Bhagavan Uvacha Partha Naiveha Namutra Partha Naiveha Namutra Vinashastasya Vidyate Vinashastasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Kritkashchit Nahi Kalyana Krit Kaschid Durgatim Tata Gachati Durgatim Tata Gachati Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Partha Naivehana Mutra Vinashastasya Vidyate Nahi Kalyana Krit Kaschit so he says, O Partha, O Arjuna, na eva iha, not here, not verily here, na amutra, or nor in the next world, vinashaha tasya vidyate. Is there a destruction of this being, of whatever this person has accomplished? There is no destruction. Nahi kalyana krit kashchit. The one who does good and anyone who does good, durgatim tata gachati means na durgatim tata gachati. They will never ever come to grief. So the blessed Lord said, O Partha, neither in this world nor in the next world is there destruction for him. None verily. Who strives to do good ever comes to grief. So the one who does good will never ever come to grief. So first let's look at this word Kalyanakrit. Okay. So I explained that 
Kalyana Krit is this person now on the path of Jnana Yoga. They're on this path, they're listening, reflecting, contemplating, full time. This is, this is their preoccupation. This is what they've devoted their lives to. But for some reason, they're not able to see the fulfillment. There are two kinds of the, these people. One is the kind that they did, they were so incredibly, incredibly sincere. But what happened is there's a, they had a bhoga vasana. They had some slight vasanas, some slight vasanas of the world maybe. And for that reason, they, they went outward or they became extroverted. Some light vasana was there. So they tried as best as they could, but some distraction came, some vasana came, and so they couldn't be as sincere as they hoped in their efforts. Huh? And the second one is that they were incredibly sincere. There's no question of distraction of vasana or anything like that. They put forth their full effort to realize the self, but for some reason, the body passed. The body died. Their prarabdha karma was over. The body died. These people are called yoga brashta. Huh? So yoga nishta is the, those who have this abidance in the self. Yoga brashta are those who, it brashta is uh, translated as fallen, but understand here, it's those that could not see this abidance, this realization to the self in its fullness because either they were, number one, pursuing it sincerely, but some vasana was there for the world that kind of made them extroverted. Or number two, they were incredibly sincere, but the prarabdha karma was over and now the body had to die. So this is Kalyana Krit. This is who's being spoken about. And if there are such people, Bhagavan says, Neveha na mutra vinasha means there will be no destruction here or there in the higher worlds. What do you mean by here? Here is when such a noble, I won't say soul, but the jiva, Jiva, that's the correct translation. When such a noble jiva passes away, everybody here will have such high regard for them. So they won't have destruction here, meaning nobody's going to criticize them in, on their death. Nobody's going to have ill feelings towards them. Nobody's going to complain about them. Everybody, on the other hand, is going to just have such a a wonderful feeling in their hearts for them because they are so dear, they were so sincere uh, and they really pursued the truth. So they will all weep for such a person, you know, because they're such a, a, such a wonderful, wonderful life they've led in this world. So no destruction here means people are not going to criticize or complain or have any bad regard for them. And no destruction amutra, na amutra vinasha. No destruction amutra means that don't worry, their afterlife also, it won't, there won't be a destruction. Whatever deep-rooted impressions they had, that will come alive in the next life. And Sri Krishna will explain, that will come alive in the next life and in the next life, they will be born in such a way that they have this opportunity to pursue the truth to its fullness. So even in the next life, there's no destruction possible whatsoever. Na vidyate. So therefore, durgatim na means there is no grief, no need to be sad for them. Because whatever they've accumulated in this life, it will definitely help them in the next life. Now, this doesn't only go for them, but this goes 
for all of us, for all of us seekers who are in the path. You know, sometimes we feel like, you know, what happens if I don't make it? What happens if I don't make it? Keep going, keep going. And even if we feel like we're not going to make it in this life, for whatever reason, know that in this life itself, we will have so much more peace, so much more joy, so much more love in our lives if we pursue this spiritual path. So even if we feel like I'm never going to get it, I'm never going to make it, keep striving because even here and now, our lives will be much better if we are walking this path. And secondly, the very fact that we have come under such a guru, glorious Guru Parampara, such a great tradition, it means that we will be carried. Puja Gurudev said, you know, there's one uh, quote where he says, I'm, I'm ready to go, but I'm at the gate waiting for you to come meet me. Right? So maybe we can doubt ourselves, but don't doubt the grace of Ishwara. Don't doubt the grace of Bhagavan. Maybe we can feel, we feel like I can only do this much. I can only do that, go that far. Fine, feel that. But don't doubt that Ishwara can take you 20 times further. Don't doubt Ishwara's grace. Hmm? And when we do our best, when we keep striving, then Bhagavan's grace will just move us. So know that nothing will be wasted. And for such sincere seekers, there will never be any lower birth after. You'll never have any lower birth. We will just keep, we will just keep going higher and higher. If we have to come back at all, it will just be higher and higher and higher. There will never be any lower birth. So, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna, don't worry at all. And he calls him Tata. Usually you call the father, grandfather Tata. But here, Sri Krishna calls Arjuna Tata. Tata means the one who's going to spread this knowledge. The one who's going to spread this knowledge. So, Sri Krishna feels that Arjuna is the disciple who is going to spread this knowledge to everybody. Now, Gurudev, I'll just read what Gurudev says in the book on page 119. Something very beautiful. He says, one who acts, this is the second paragraph, one who acts rightly in the present can come to no grief in the future because the future is but a product of the present, and the good is that which yields but success and joy in the future. So know that whatever we're experiencing is nothing but our choices before. You know, people always have this question of prarabdha and purushartha, self-effort and destiny. What we're experiencing now is nothing but our self-effort in the past. We made some choices in the past and therefore they're all fructifying here and now. If last night or the night before I made good choices about sleeping well and eating well, then that will fructify now. If I made bad choices, then that will fructify now. So our destiny now is nothing but our self-effort that was there in the past. And our destiny to be will be nothing but our self-effort in the present. So if we keep striving, then guaranteed our destiny will be great. Now, Sri Krishna tells Arjuna about these two. So I had given you two different kinds, two different scenarios. So first he's going to talk about Scenario one, scenario one, who had some vasanas still left. And because of that, they could not see the, the, the total fullness of their self-realization. Where are they born? How are they born? 
Let's see now in verse 41. Prapya punya kritam lokan. Prapya punya kritam lokan. Ushitva shashwati samaha. Ushitva shashwati samaha. Shuchi nam shri matam gehe. Shuchi nam shri matam gehe. Yoga brashto bi jayate. Yoga brashto bi jayate. Prapya punya kritam lokan. Ushitva shashwati samaha. Shuchi nam shri matam gehe. Yoga brashto bi jayate. So what happens here? Prapya. This people, these seekers, Prapya Punya Kritam Lokan, they attain higher worlds. So after death, they attain higher worlds. Ushitva Shashwatihi. Ushitva, having dwelled there, Shashwati, for a long time, not everlasting, but long time. Samaha, for long years. Shuchi nam shri matam gehe abhijayate means they are abhijayate they are born shuchi nam in the house of those who are pure shri matam of those who are wealthy gehe in their house those who are yoga brashtaha fallen from yoga meaning those who couldn't see the fulfillment in self realization so having attained to the worlds of the righteous and having dwelt there for everlasting long years, he who had fallen from yoga is born again in the house of the pure and wealthy. So for this person, for this particular seeker, the vairagya and abhyasa, the practice and the detachment was not full enough. There were still some, some subtle desires. So what happens to them? They go to higher worlds. They go to higher lokas to exhaust those desires that are still remaining there. Whatever subtle desires are still remaining there, they go there, they exhaust them. And then what happens is they are born again. And where are they born? Shuchi nam shri matam gehe. They, they are born in these homes where the family is very pure and pious. Shuchina. Pure and pious means the family is into the field of spirituality. So it's easier for that person to come to the spiritual path. So there might they might be a home where saints and sages visit, a home where spiritual books are kept. A home where puja is done, chanting is done, prayer is done. A home where a lot of seva is done for the world. So a very, very pious family, a great family, is very spiritually inclined. They're born in such a family. And not only a pious and a pure family, but also Sri Matam, a wealthy family. So that they are able to pursue spirituality. Because when one is in financial distress or when we're thinking about how to make ends meet, we cannot think about spiritual scriptures or study. But somebody who's born in a home that's financially stable, then, then they're able to fully think of higher things without worrying about money or unnecessary things. So this yoga brashta, will be born to such a home and in time in time you know the samskara will be will be there but in time that samskara will just bloom and come alive and this yoga brashta will then continue very deeply and sincerely in the path of shravanam mananam and nididhyasnam and see to their fullest realization in that very life so this is what will happen to them. Hmm? They are born in such 
homes. But what about those who are Yoga Brashta 2? Yoga Brashta, the second type, meaning those who were so sincere, they had no vasanas, no such vasanas to enjoy the world, so sincere. What happens to them? We'll just touch upon this. More elaboration we'll see next week. Verse number 42. Atava yogina meva. Atava yogina meva. Kule bhavati dhimatam. Kule bhavati dhimatam. Etad hidur labataram. Etad hidur labataram. Loke janmaya didrisham. Loke janmaya didrisham. Atava yogina meva. Kule bhavati dhimatam. Etad hidur labataram. Loke janmaya didrisham. Atava or yoginam eva or of these yogis kule in the family bhavati they are born in the home of yogis and dhimatam who are very very wise etathi durlabhataram this kind of birth is very very rare loke in this world janma this birth is very rare in this world yet idrisham so something like this is very rare. Or he is born in the family of wise yogis. Verily, a birth like this is very difficult to obtain in the world. So what happens to this yoga brashta type 2? They have no more vasanas to exhaust. So they don't even go to higher worlds. They don't even go to higher worlds. They just come straight. Again, they are reborn. Where are they born? They are born in the house of great yogis. It means great meditators, practitioners, those who are very, very contemplative. And the matam, those who are very wise, they are born in such great families. But this kind of birth, this is very, very rare. It's very, very rare. And those who are, this is, you know, fruits of, Enormous tapasya, enormous tapas. Examples, great examples of this are Shukracharya, uh, Shukracharya ji, who, uh, not Shukracharya, Shukacharya, the son of Vedavyasa, Shukacharya. Then we have Ashtavakra, Ashtavakra, also very, very rare. Then we have uh, Nyandev, Muktabai, Sopandev, Nivrittinath, uh, the four children, the four children of Vithalpant. They, they are born to the house of yogis. Very, very wise. Uh, that kind of birth is extremely rare. Like if you see Shuka, right? Shuka already, when he was young, he he just walked out of the house. He didn't even, you know, and not even wanting anything, whatever. He was so young. He just stood up and he walked out of his house because that, that was already there, that samskara was already there. And when we look at the lives of Nyaneshwar Maharaj, Muktabai, Nivrittinath, Sopandev, that knowledge that was already there in their works, in their abhangas, we can see that and how they themselves took Mahasamadhi and left this world. So this is what happens to the yoga brashtas. So the main point here is that nothing is ever wasted. That's what we can take away as seekers. Don't ever feel like we're not going to see the end of it. We're not going to see the end of it. This is really tough. No, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And know that no matter how far we reach, there's always Ishwara's grace that will push us even further.
his, the more our self-effort will be, the more his grace will be, because that self-effort is proportionate to that grace. And we will make it if we have come under such a glorious Guru Parampara, if we have Bhagavan's grace, and if we are sincere, then we will make it. That's what Bhagavan Krishna is trying to say. So more elaboration on these two we will see next week. Okay? Say the closing prayer. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidham Pur Nath Pur Namudachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurabhyo Namaha Hari Om